Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another Destiny video. Now the Destiny 2 hype train is out of the way, or at least to one side for the moment, we can now turn our attention to Age of Triumph. Crota's End is of course the weekly featured raid this time round, it has a couple of new challenge modes as well as a few minor changes here and there, so what I thought I would do is put together a video going over all of those. This video will not only tell you guys what is new in Crota's End Raid, but it will also tell you how to do the two different challenge modes. So, if you have any questions with regards to what is new, and also you want to know how to do the challenge modes so you can get your adept weapons, then look no further. If you do enjoy this, you do find it helpful, then a like would be super appreciated. Any questions, drop them down below. It's also worth noting I am going to be making this video with the assumption that you have done Crota's End Raid before, so I won't be going over all of the individual fight mechanics. There will be some that I will assume that you already know, so if you don't know those, then you can still check out my Crota's End guides from way back when Dark Below first came out. They will still provide some value. Anyway, starting off at the very beginning, the Abyss, when you drop down into the Dark Pit, this fundamentally behaves the same way. You still work your way towards the Lanterns. You still, of course, stand by them to lose the Darkness. And you then continue to work your way until the end, where you then need to stand on the platform and begin building the bridge. The only difference is that there appear to be more ads this time around, and on top of the ogres, there are also some wizards that spawn, so it can get a little bit hectic, so I would highly recommend having a titan, or a couple of titans with some bubbles, so you can hide beneath those, and maybe some storm callers to clear the ads. But either way, still behaves the same way, stand on the platform until the bridge builds, and then turn around and run into the white light. Completing that successfully will then get you to the bridge section. Now this is the first part of the raid that has actually seen some noteworthy changes. The fight itself, to begin with, still plays out the same way. You basically split your team up into three teams of two and you have them stand on the three respective platforms. Doing so will build the bridge and of course while you're standing there you deal with the adds until the sword bearer comes down and you then kill the sword bearer, grab the sword and send one of the people across the bridge to the other side. They will then be greeted by a gatekeeper, you use the sword to kill him, the easiest way to do that is to use the right trigger attack, three of those will kill a gatekeeper, however what differs this time around is that there are now statues, these are the kind of statues you saw outside Kingsfall Raid, there are 10 of these by the staircase. Every time you kill a gatekeeper, these will light up. You need to light all of them in order to complete this section. However, that does not mean to say there are 10 rotations on the bridge. This is what then happens. Your first person is over, they then stand there and deal with the adds, and you then repeat the process back on the other side, where you send over two reigning guardians so that you basically have three people on one side, three people on the other, and if you've done this successfully, you will have taken out three gatekeepers and have three statues lit. What now happens is the three people on the opposing side will stand on their platforms to keep the bridge held. Meanwhile, the people back on the original side can then stand off, and they can of course then focus on the adds and take down the sword bearer. Now, once your fourth guardian grabs the sword and crosses the bridge, this is where the fight changes. You will then see a text prompt on screen that says the bridge is whole. From this point, nobody needs to stand on the platforms, everyone is free to cross the bridge because what happens next is a load of swords spawn and there are enough for each member of your team. You will then use the swords to fight all the adds that are coming your way and you basically fight these until more gatekeepers begin to spawn. They will come out in large numbers and you'll typically have to fight four or five together, but basically you use the swords to deal with the adds and deal with the gatekeepers until all the statues are lit and once they are, you've then completed this section. It's actually a really, really cool change. It makes this bit a hell of a lot more fun, a hell of a lot more interesting and has definitely now risen up to be one of my favorite parts of this entire raid. But that is pretty much all you need to know. So again, fundamentally the fight begins the same way but it's only once you get your fourth person across the bridge that things take a little bit of a twist and then that is where you go ham with the sword. Once you've done that, you then work your way up and you run through the corridor. This bit behaves the same, and again, if you do it quick enough, you can get to the chest at the end that just contains materials. Dropping down to the pit, that of course leads us on to the next pit, and this is where your first challenge mode begins. Now, of course, if you don't care about the challenge mode and you just want to complete the raid, then you can do this pretty much how you did before. But given that everyone wants to go after the adept weapons, I'm going to tell you guys how to do the challenge mode. So, a few things you need to know with regards to the Death Singer. First up, in order to complete the challenge mode, you have to kill Iryut with a sword. Not just one of your swords, it has to be the sword dropped by the sword bearer. However, in order to get the sword bearer to spawn, you have to do a few things first, namely clearing pretty much all the adds. So you begin the fight and you run out the door. You want to take out the two knights that are kneeling on the stairs. You then want to work your way up and take out the knights in the towers and also the knights that are in the rooms and basically across the bridges. Effectively, all the knights that are roaming around, you need to kill them. You also need to kill the acolytes. You effectively need to clear the room of all of the adds. When you do this, the wizards that are inside the room with the death singer will then come out and you can then kill the wizards and any additional straggling adds and from that point onwards you will then be able to destroy the shriekers. Of course usual kind of strategy when you destroy the shrieker you want to run outside to make sure you don't get destroyed by the purple void blast that home in on you. However once you've done that 
more adds will spawn. You then want to kill those, run into the Death Singer room and kill the two knights that are there, but do not kill the Death Singer. What you now want to do is turn around and come back out once you've killed the knights. More adds will spawn, you clear those out and then some ogres will spawn down below. There are three in total, one on the left, one in the middle and one on the right. It's also worth noting that on top of the ogres there will also be knights up in the top left and the top right towers. The best way to deal with these is to have people with swords run up there, they go down very quickly if you have people with a sword, especially the exotic swords. So what I would recommend is when you get to the point where the ogres are there, have two people go up to the towers and deal with the adds. Meanwhile the other people can turn to their yellow horns or your strong heavy weapon to take out the ogres. Once all of those enemies are destroyed, the doors will then open and a sword bearer will come out. You destroy the sword bearer and you then grab the sword and run up to kill the death singer. Now do of course bear in mind that during this time the death singer will have begun her song. Ideally, if you're doing it correctly, she will have started singing probably just before the sword bearer comes out. So you'll then have about 30 seconds to run into the room and kill her. She only takes one hit with the sword. So provided you can get there before she finishes her song, then that will see you to victory. Couple of things to look out for to know that you've done this correctly. Once you've killed enough ads and you've basically triggered the phase where the other knights and the ogres will come out, a text prompt will appear on screen to say that there is a shriek from Ir Yut. Basically, she's screaming because you've killed all of her guardians, everyone to kind of protect her, and that is what brings on the next phase. So that is what you want to look out for. But essentially, go in, clear the ads until she screams, clear the rest of the ads, specifically the knights and the towers and the ogres, kill the sword bearer, grab the sword. Use the sword to kill Ir Yut, and then job done. That will complete your challenge mode, and if you do that, you'll not only get an ornament that you can then use on any of the new raid gear, plus you will get a guaranteed adept weapon, and of course also the emblem as well. So, that is the Ir Yut challenge mode complete. Now let's turn our attention to Crota. So first up, there are a few changes to Crota. Again, if you just want to complete the raid itself, then this does play out largely the same but there are still a few differences the first of which is that even on hard mode there is actually a chalice so you can use that to heal yourself also the oversoul will now no longer spawn on the player death but it will instead spawn every time crota stands up so when you drop into his knee and you deal damage with the sword once he stands up the oversoul will spawn no matter what the other main change is that the ledge outside the main window where people used to stand and fire the yellow horns that now has an invisible barrier so you can't actually stand there but you can still stand just to the right or to the left so that's not really too much of an issue and in order to defeat Crota and complete the challenge mode, the only thing you need to do is have a different sword bearer each time. In other words, the same person cannot carry two different swords. So ideally, if you can do this in three rotations, you will only need three sword runners. Crota will take 16 right trigger attacks to kill and 13 to enter in rage mode. So if each member successfully lands six hits, then you should be fine. So this is how your fight plays out. You begin by staying in the central room, you of course stand on the platform, the barriers go down, you clear the ads, and then once everyone is grouped up, you then work your way outside. You then send one person down to go and meet the sword bearer, at which point everyone else will then help take him out. Once the sword is down, they grab it and then work their way up to the side of Crota, ideally on the right because it's the easiest place to jump up. Everyone else will then down Crota, typically with Yellowhorn or something else suitable. You then go in and you land three right trigger attacks. There's enough time to do those, don't try and get in a fourth. It's easier if you land three and then get straight out. It's also worth mentioning you cannot drop the sword. One of the typical tactics back in the day would be that you drop the sword as a blade dancer, you would then melee Crota to go invisible, you pick the sword back up. If you drop the sword, a text prompt will appear on screen to say that you have failed the challenge, so you must hold onto the sword. So land your three hits, jump away using the sword swing to get yourself away, and then hide in the corner. And then this next part is very important, because as mentioned, when Crota stands up, the oversoul will spawn. But in order to make sure you can get the second rotation in, what you then want to do is make sure that once he stood up, everyone downs Crota again before they begin dealing with the oversoul. If you do this, it then means the sword bearer can then go and attack Crota once more. Meanwhile, the rest of the team can be taking out the oversoul. There's plenty of time to do this, so that should be your priority. Down Crota, get the hits in, down him a second time, get the hits in, and then take out the oversoul. Once this is done, everyone works their way back inside, groups up in the center, and then repeats the process. You do this a second time round, again with a different sword runner this time round. It cannot be the same person if you want to complete the challenge. You repeat this process and after this run you'll of course have the ogre phase. If you've done this correctly and you've landed six hits then you'll be very near to completion. After this stage you will of course then turn your attention to the ogres. The sword bearer will not spawn until the ogres are dead. So work your way out of the rooms carefully dealing with the ogres and once they have done so the sword bearer will work his way out. Now of course if during this time Crota has rotated to the left or to the right just work your way back in the room and wait until he goes back to the center. It's far easier to fight him in the center while you can deal with him on the left or the right it just makes things unnecessarily complicated. So once you've done that and you circle back to the center, go back out, repeat the process, down the sword bearer, down Crota, 
deal damage. And if you've done this correctly, then after the third hit, he will then enter in rage mode. So after this point, you then want to do the same as before. Make sure you down him once his shield drops and then land the last three hits and that'll be your challenge mode complete. So again, to reiterate, provided you've had a different sword bearer each time, that is all you need to do in order to complete the challenge mode. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. Those are the changes in Crota's Same Rate. That is everything you need to know, so hopefully you guys find this helpful. Again, if you have any questions, drop them down below. And thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.